What up, everybody? This is your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first-time listener, I'd like to thank you all so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody recommended you to me, take your social media app of choice and uh, send them a well-crafted DM and tell them thank you for recommending you to me. Speaking of social media, you can find the Random Rounds with Rob on various social media platforms to include Twitter at 3R Show, Instagram, the 3R Show, because they got some pump motherfucker on there. They already got 3R Show and they haven't posted since September of 2015. Sorry, bastard. Um, but anyway, you can find me on YouTube, 3R Show, Facebook, 3R Show, Twitch, 3R Show. You see the recurring theme here. You can find the Random Rambles with Rob on just about any social media platform that you got. Joining me, speaking in the vein of social media, I have a young man. When I was, uh, I got this new computer in here. I got all these crazy lights and shit. And I was trying to figure out how to configure and work all this crap. Because for many years, this podcast has been run with a laptop that has been to Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, has sand in it, um, multiple hard drive transplants, freaking shoestring RAM, all that. We know this. We've heard the struggles of this show with the recording equipment. Now, I got this big beefy bitch over here. I got a new mixer in here that I hope sounds okay, but I don't know how to use none of this crap. So in my quest for knowledge and to better configure all my, my setup, I hit the YouTube. Typey type type. How do I be a better Twitch streamer? How do I produce better YouTube content, which I still didn't pay attention to the videos because my shit is trash. But there was one face that I would see all the time. One face that would continuously pop up when I do these searches. It's funny because the face will stay the same, but the hair is always different. <laughs> Joining me on this edition of the Random Rounds with Rob is the man himself. Yeah, level. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks for thanks for having me, and thanks for for that very cool intro. I appreciate it. And I I appreciate you giving me your time and everything. I know it's a little late where you are, but um, nonetheless, you're appreciated here, sir. Thank you. Now, now I got, I gotta ask. Um, like I said, I, I'm searching for knowledge out here. I'm trying to learn my setup. I'm trying to figure out this whole social media thing. I've been doing a podcast for a little over four years now, almost five in January. And that's all it's been. It's just been audio format. You know, I do a little bit here and there on Instagram and everything, but now that I have a setup here, big beefy bitch, big beautiful thing. I wish I could show it to you. I'm just caressing it ever so gently right now. <laughs> but um, I've been out of the game so long as far as technology goes. I've, been using caveman tools to do this podcast now i got this over the top thing and um i'm just trying to figure it out but for you 2015 looking at your youtube page and um i just see a young man just sitting here playing grand theft auto with his friend <laughs> a little bit of a battlefield three and everything that's a little bit of sign of the times for gamers and everything yeah but, this was your humble beginnings from what I know. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what kind of kickstarted this for you? What made you decide, here we are, I got the exact date of this video, on, oh, we got ads popping up. So, I mean, that's the show you be doing big time right here. Get... <laughs> January 5th of 2015. We got you here playing Grand Theft Auto Five with your friends and everything. What made you decide that, hey, I'm going to stream this, I'm going to put it up on social media and see what happens? Um, I, it, it's kind of a funny story because I, I, uh, I was working a nine to five job at the time and I just was coming back home and playing Grand Theft Auto and playing Battlefield. But I wanted like a group of friends that I could, regularly play with you know i didn't have that 
specific group of friends. I was just playing with randoms and I was losing a lot of matches. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. I need to make friends. I need to find people who play this game, who are cool, who, who are good at the game. And um, I was already watching certain streamers on Twitch. And I told myself, hey, maybe if I start a Twitch channel, uh, people will come in to my chat and then they'll play with me. And then I'll, that's how I can make my group of friends. So I started doing that. And I just did the, the bare minimum. You know, I had a webcam. I had uh, like a, I, I was using the original Xbox headset as a mic yeah, for my, it was crazy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I was really not spending a lot of money or not, I was not spending anything in my stream. And I was just having fun. And the more it, the more I, like the more people would come to my stream, the more I would think, hey, maybe I should uh, make a YouTube channel. Uh, so I made that YouTube channel and I thought that this YouTube channel will, will mostly have clips, funny moments of what happens to the Twitch, mm -hmm. which is a very, very bad strategy. I, I don't <laughs> recommend doing that. Uh, <laughs> but then the more I wanted to implement stuff to my stream, I wanted my stream to look better and, and have all the gadgets and widgets and stuff to, to, that the big streamers were having back then. And I realized how complicated it was yeah. like this thing is impossible like the level the skill level that you need to have to in order to have a fully functional stream is is crazy so s some of the things didn't even make sense to me mm -hmm. the idea that twitch as a platform um for example does not allow you to get direct donations mm -hmm. to me that was insane the fact that yeah. twitch doesn't have an, an alert system to tell you when someone follows you for example mm -hmm. twitch doesn't tell you that they, they can send you an email but like you need it on screen you know uh, yeah, um, yeah. so in order to do all those things um it was so complex that i figured out how to do it and when i figured out how to do it i was so happy that i was like hey maybe I should make like a tutorial to help other people mm -hmm. that are in my situation. Cause I can't be the only one struggling with this. Yeah. So uh, when I found out how to do it, I just made my first tutorial. It was how to make, um, how to set up Twitch alerts. And then that blew up. That really blew up compared to, you know, my clips compilation that no one was looking for. <laughs> so um, I was like, Oh, okay. So apparently people enjoy that. And then they asked me to do more. So I make more. And then, and then here I am today. I, I think I had something like, less than th uh, than 10 subs um when i when i did my first tutorial and uh five years later i'm almost at sixty thousand now <laughs> yeah yeah it's um, a lot <laughs> 57 and 57 thousand and a half <laughs> <laughs> there we go yeah um i, I do have another follow-up question to uh in regards to your earlier streams and everything mm. um mostly french i know are you a native to where you are yeah i am i'm actually in paris right now i'm 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 french <laughs> yeah. i live in paris and um but i was born in the caribbeans so mm. that's why i probably don't sound french when i speak english <laughs> uh. <laughs> but yeah um i i started i didn't know what i i really didn't know where to go and what to do so i was like well i speak french i speak english uh, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to make some videos in French, some videos in English. Started streaming in French and also English. Um, but then I quickly realized that I had to choose because, you know, yeah. it, when you switch up the language on viewers and they don't understand what you're saying, it, it makes them un uncomfortable. You know, if you're watching a movie and they start speaking a foreign language without subtitles, you're going to feel awkward. <laughs> so I was like, I, I need to choose one. So I decided to go with English because, you know, there's more people speaking English or understanding English mm -hmm. all over the world. Uh, also in the game in the gaming community like fr french people don't have the best reputation so <laughs> I, I, I prefer staying away from like toxic communities and stuff like that okay and uh, what do you think uh some uh stereotypes that come with uh people you know, on your side of the world or whatever especially like paris or whatnot because soon as i see you said Paris. I was like, I'm in yeah. Paris. I, I was like, oh, this motherfucker rich. Mm. Oh, <laughs> He's eating caviar and you know beluga beluga caviar and steak every night and shit. I was like, it's, you know, but that's just a common misconception. You know, yeah, um, it's a, you know. it's definitely a, a misconception. I mean, the, Paris is a is a very beautiful city and and it's it's kind of known to be this rich place, but like it's specific. It's very very select specific places in Paris that are ultra rich the rest is just is just normal if if not poor really uh i'm not in the rich side of paris that's <laughs> that's for sure you're in the comfortable side <laughs> yeah i'm on the comfortable 
ish side. <laughs> <laughs> so like, um, I, I did also another question. Uh, do you see China? Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, uh, I feel like this one's gonna follow me until until I die. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, because it, it was hilarious. It's, because I, was, I mean, I was just like how you were in the video. It was just like, what? <laughs> just like <laughs> I was trying to see. I, I was waiting for the punchline, the setup, you know. And it was just, you, I mean, do you see it in the distance? I was like, what? The <laughs> <laughs> Same. Still to the, to this day, no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> But it's um, crazy. so I mean, <laughs> it, it made me giggle. Think about it. But <laughs> um, what what was the most like the driving factor into um, pursuing more of the tutorial things rather than just strictly gaming? Um, I I used to work as a um, well, my main job was uh, graphic designer, motion designer. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always interested in, you know, making, if I, if I was going to have like a, a video broadcast, I, I really wanted to make it look as good as possible and, and be super creative and make, you know, flashy stuff on the screen. And, and um, that's why I was actively pursuing uh, things to make my stream look good. And, and since I had that one tutorial that worked really well, I was like, well, well, while I'm learning, I could also teach, you know, the more I learn, the more I, I can teach other people. So anyone that's in my situation, I, like, I know exactly how they feel. <laughs> so I would really know exactly how to explain the problems to them and, and how to solve them. So that's really where it, run f where it came from. I, I also worked in marketing. So like the whole world of entertainment is, wasn't really new to me. Uh, Twitch was really the, the focus and, and that new thing that I was so excited about discovering and learning about and, mm -hmm. and all the tips and tricks. So it, it, it was kind of a natural flow of things when it comes to my channel c c because I was learning. So I was teaching at the same time, pretty much I'm st yeah. still to this day, really <laughs> same to this thing day. to this day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, um, so now you're doing a, a series that, you know, I just caught wind over everything um, where you kind of give, constructive criticism to people who um, do their own streams. You just kind of give them tricks and tips and everything, what they can do to make it better, what they should scrap and all kind of crap like that. So when did you become confident enough in your streaming ability, your, your process and everything to be like, all right, now I can give other people advice. Uh, it took me years. It took a couple of years before I was really in that position where I felt like, okay, I can tell you that's good or that's bad because I've, I've, I've been there enough and I've seen the reaction of other people uh, enough. Something, something that I did um, when I started my channel is that I joined a Facebook group for Twitch streamers and I was an admin there. I'm still an, an admin there. And the Facebook kind of blew up. Like right now there's like 6,000 uh, Twitch streamers and that's because we were, we were really restricted. Yeah, um, and so I, I was interacting with streamers on a daily basis and i was you know looking at success stories and and failure stories too so i really had a good grasp on what works what doesn't work uh what what may sound like a good idea but will end up you know biting you in the butt um in the end so that's really when i i figured hey i with, with all this knowledge i could i could just tell people hey i can just at, at a first glance of your channel, I could probably tell you how I feel about it and how you could make it even better, make it more catchy. And um, turns out there's a lot of um, people who are completely inexperienced getting a Twitch channel because like that's the that's the easy <laughs> that's the easiest part. Anyone can go on Twitch.tv, create a channel, and start streaming. But uh, um, I what I can provide is really the psychology behind. Uh, whatever you're going to post on your channel, how it's going to look, which colors you're going to use, which words you're going to use, wh wh what sounds like a red flag versus something yeah. that is enticing and, and where someone already feels like they've bonded with you by reading your description, for example. So mm -hmm. that's, that's mostly what I focus on. Okay. Now, um, as far as your advice given and everything, what is the one thing that you are constantly repeating to everybody? Like the one thing that you always... <laughs> <laughs> give to them as advice 
<laughs> to be fair, I'm always repeating everything all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, you yeah. need a new one every every day, just about. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> it's a it's a good thing in a way. But um, I I got a lot of people asking me, you know, very very general questions, very vague questions, like, "Hey, I want to be the Switch streamer. Um, what is your one advice? What is?" And it's impossible to give one advice yeah. that fits all because I don't know you. You know, yeah, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. I, I, I figured out, hey, I, I actually have an advice that I give people is, you know, if you're going to start broadcasting yourself, the goal is to, to entertain. So my, my one advice for someone who wants to stream is don't be boring. That's it. Just don't be boring. Uh, and there's multiple ways of not being boring. And, and if in your head you have that mentality of don't be boring, don't be boring, you will find things to improve until yeah. your stream is really fully entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it's um, kind of like in the same vein with podcasting and everything. You always got to feel that dead air, you know, yeah. like, you know, just say, just say we weren't doing a video right now. And I mean, people will hear the audio. If we were just sitting here like, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 that's not a good podcast. Yeah. Not, not even for that, that brief second in there. It's just Absolutely. like, what, it's like, what the hell going on? Are they, <laughs> like, are they, they dead? What, what's happening? Did they get attacked? You know, but um. I, I've seen it now because, you know, I, I watch your channel. I watch uh, another guy that I wanted to talk to, uh, Nutty. I watch his channel. Hey, Nutty, yeah. And, um, you know, I just see, you know, I watch you and I, I'm just like, there's no wasted air there. You know, any, any time that the camera is on, you, you know, you got breath in your lungs or whatever, you know, something is being yeah. said, some trigger effect is going off, you know, some advice is being given. So, I mean, that's some of the things that I'm taking in because I know for me personally, um, I just did a whole series on Twitch because, you know, I'm just starting out. And I went back and revisited uh, Def Jam Fight for New York. So I went through and I played the whole story mode on stream. Oh, yeah. So a thing for me was like, I get zoned out and I get entranced in the story because I haven't played the game. <laughs> Actually, it originally came out in like 2004. So I'm just trying to get used to controllers again because you know i've been playing the xbox one x and the fucking playstation yeah. 4 pro in the switch <laughs> and then you go back to like a console like the original xbox and like the playstation 2 and these controls are garbage yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know we have come a long way in technology yeah we have <laughs> but those old controls are garbage i tried to play through kingdom hearts one and two before i played three i got the first one and i was like uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think i don't think i I, I, I finished I, Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3 is sitting up here in my cabinet right now unopened still sealed <laughs> since day one when it came out oh, because no. I had the idea that like hey I'm gonna play part one I'm gonna play part two refamiliarize myself with the story get up to speed and I got yeah. them controls for part one nah bro nah <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and that's the only thing that's holding me back from three but you know I could probably get on YouTube and watch all the cinematics strung out through all the yeah. series or whatever. So I probably just wind up doing that so I can finally get my hands on the third one. But man, what I did find for me, you know, just playing through, trying to be engaging and entertaining. Cause first of all, you gotta have somebody to be engaging and entertaining with, especially when you're just starting like me. Ain't nobody <laughs> popping up in the chat. So I'm yeah. sitting with like zippity doo da, yeah. <laughs> and you know, just, you know, making noises in here, adjusting stuff, you know, trying to, you know, be active and everything. But here, here, here we go. I'm gonna let you in on something because there's all, there's always full transparency with every guest that comes on this show. Cause I mean, all right. there's some, there's a reason why you're here. One, because you're educating me. And I feel like there's other people out there that needs this education if streaming is a platform or YouTube is a platform that they want to pursue. You know, you can provide them with that insight. But as much as, as like these LED lights that you see in here right now, I used to trash the shit out of streaming. I used to trash the shit out of all this LED, RGB, <laughs> crazy shit. You know, there is a, a, if you ever find my Instagram, there is an Instagram video that I just most recently reposted from four years ago. And it was a, a Corsair RGB keyboard that I saw in Walmart. It was changing all kind of different crazy colors <laughs> and whatnot. They had a mouse to go with it. It was changing colors. It was doing all kind of disco shit. 
And I, I was in the video. I can hear my voice. I know I was there. And I was like, who the fuck would want this? <laughs> Why do your, your keyboard need to change colors? I mean, does it, you know, does this amplify your typing skills, your clerical skills? Why, why, why do you need this? Does it give you like freaking 5% more horsepower on your, your, your streaming deck or whatever? I mean, what, what do you need this for? Just deliberately trash me because mm. one, I didn't understand it and everything. And I did. And then I didn't know the sheer coolness of the thing. Cause now <laughs> oh. <there you> are. <laughs> the same, almost the same exact keyboard oh, no. <laughs> that I was talking shit about four years ago. It's yeah. Right here on my desk glowing all kind of crazy colors. <laughs> what not. And um, I thought similar things about um people who did Twitch and all kind of stuff like that because, you know, I didn't understand it because I'm, I'm from a little bit older generation to where we sat shoulder to shoulder and played games with each other. Yeah. And what not. And, you know, um, so... I was still, get off my lawn, you goddamn streamers, <laughs> you know, freaking, yeah. you're taking away of my nostalgia and shit. <laughs> but um, after actually having guests on the show that did this for a living or a profession or, you know, consistently, you know, mm. I, I got to know those people and I was like, well, he's a streamer. He can't be that bad. <laughs> so, you know, in support of them, I would catch their streams and, you know, I'll follow their content and everything. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. I mean, this is really not too different from what I'm doing on the podcast. It's just I got a camera and shit now and some other bells and whistles. So yeah. I've grown um, much more as a broadcaster and as a, as a person. And I, I do want to give my respect to you, sir, and those oh. of, <laughs> of, of your kind because I was a hater. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, but uh, it wound up being fun, you know? So, I mean, what are what are some of the um, things that you really enjoy about streaming? Well, to, to, to be fair, I was I was also kind of a hater of the whole RGB thing. Ha! Uh, I'm, um, alone. <laughs> I'm still I'm still slightly <laughs> a yeah. hater of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm uh, I don't have anything that are, that's RGB. I have two keyboards and none of them are RGB because I still don't see the, the value in it. But um, those mechanical keyboards, the, those keys feel really good though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, um, it's one of the advice that I give. It's, it's people who like, I, I, I understand the hype and, and the, the hobby side of mm -hmm. everything. Cause yeah. you know, uh, on my channel, I talk about it's more, it's more like a business. I, I don't talk like it was a business, but you know, my goal is to help people be better yeah. creators and you know, being a better creator means having success mm -hmm. too. So um, I get the hobby side that I want this shiny thing basically, because mm. it's what I do. I'm a gamer. Uh, I get that. But um, what I tell certain people who are just starting, they feel like there's a certain, because of the image, basically, of the typical yeah. streamer, they feel like, That's what hey, I, I need, have. yeah, I, I yeah. need that gear, basically. And, and you know, the prices go really high. It's Good such boy. an expensive <laughs> hobby. It's like, you, 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 would, you would be better off doing any other hobby really at this point you learn really? photography or just go fishing or something <laughs> <laughs> like everything is like 150 up to 500 um it's it's crazy so yeah. i'm i'm from a third world country you know i was born in in haiti and i I didn't know about spending money like that. Basically, yeah. I didn't. That wasn't part of. It's still not part of me, really. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use my perspective and and maybe help people out. Like you can see here, this is like a, a replica of the Elgato key light. Yeah. And this is the. Those are like 200 bucks. Well, the the the, the real ones the real are 200 one, yeah. bucks. And I made this one out of cardboard for like 13 bucks. And it works, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I really, I really did that in 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 hopes that you know other people, not only just like me, but you know, young kids who are watching their favorite streamers don't feel like, oh, this guy is professional because mm -hmm. you know all that money is spent. I yeah. can't be because broadcasting is all about that entertainment. You know, you could you could be. Like people watch cooking shows. I, I watch people eat on stream. You know, it, it, it <laughs> yeah. really doesn't matter. It's like as long as the you watch streams for people, you really don't watch 
people. Of course, when your background looks good and stuff like mm-hmm. that, it, it helps, you know, just like in normal television, you know, the, yeah. the, the host of any show will dress up nicely. It'll have makeup on. It's like the presentation, but ultimately um, the person is, is who you're watching for. So that's the type of advice that I, I really try to hammer in um, with my content. Okay. Yeah. Cause like what, turn the curve on me for like all these lights and bullshit in here is um I built this well I didn't build it I picked the parts that were put into the computer <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but, uh, but um what I started doing was you know making some minor upgrades and everything because this computer didn't come with any um fans so I was like mm. well, red is my favorite color <laughs> so I get on Amazon wow they got red fans slap that in here yeah that look nice. <laughs> I was like, now nah, it's time to upgrade my RAM. Wow, to make RGB RAM. I can get some, can get some red RAM. Red RAM. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this ARGB? So wait a minute, it can change other colors than red? Because I just got it like singular color red. Yeah. Oh, so they can change colors. All right. So I got some other RAM that changed colors. I was like, word, word. Okay. And then, you know, since red is my favorite color, I got these little LED lights from Walmart for like 10 bucks. So I put one strip up and I adjusted them to red. And I was like, man, I like this vibe. This feels good. Then another strip came in here. Then another strip came in here. <laughs> then the goddamn keyboard. I said, I can get a red keyboard. I was like, Wait a minute. No, nah, why would I get a red keyboard? I can get an RGB keyboard and turn the colors red. Oh, and then here I am. That's looking how it like, starts. Yeah. yeah, looking like a hot colored mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, even right now, like, um, and another thing with the RGB stuff, um, looking at streams, you know, their um, trigger controls and everything. You know, you get a follow or a sub or something, make the yeah. lights turn colors. That was something that I was interested in as well. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm here I am ordering Wi-Fi connectors. Yo, I got those, yeah. <laughs> and trying to piece it all together and figure it out because, what I find out about myself is, you know, I'm more of a fan of the process, mm-hmm. you know, of how the person did this rather than, you know, a, some somewhat of a, the, the content that they produce. It's just like, I wonder how he did that. Now, <laughs> here I am. Yeah. I figure it out and everything. And it, 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 kind, it kind of becomes addictive. <laughs> It, it does. It does. I, I'm. I'm kind of like. Well, I'm. I'm totally like that too. And and I think that's why I, I'm. I mostly post on YouTube. I'm mostly active on YouTube yeah. rather than my own Twitch channel. Because you know, if I if I was that much into streaming, I'd be streaming every day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I only stream like once a week, uh, if, even then. Um, so even though I spend I spend my whole weeks just looking up stream stuff. Mm-hmm. just so I can make YouTube videos and ex- explain a process. Because like when I fi- find out a new, um, a new way of doing something, I'm, I get excited. I'm like, oh, well, let me tell people about it, you know? So it's, yeah. it, I definitely feel you on that. <laughs> yeah, because like more, more for me, it's just like, you know, instead of being in front of the camera, I, most of the times I'd rather feel like I, I would, I feel more comfortable being behind the camera, the guy calling the shots and directing and everything. Yeah. You know, with this stuff, I feel like, I want to get a good grasp on it to figure it out because my kids, this is their era. This is their shit, you know? Oh, they, okay. they, they look up YouTube every day. They, they quoting YouTube lines, you know, from certain <laughs> YouTube pages and everything. And um, they know about streams. And even my youngest one, um, the, uh, my 10 year old, she talking about, she wanted to do a, a YouTube channel or a streaming channel. And <laughs> For me, it's like, I want to master this shit in case we pull the trigger on that. So she ain't, mm. how, how? And I can just be like, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Macros, bitch. I wouldn't, yeah. say, I wouldn't call my kid a bitch, but I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I get you. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it, 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 it's, fun. it's a fun process and everything. Because, like, um, even with the um, whole thing with uh, OBS and, um, you know, freaking the... Uh, NDI plugins for Skype and yeah. how to switch scenes. I got this crazy, we talk about Elgato and expensive shit. I made my wife buy it. Um, I, got a, <laughs> I got a stream deck right here so I can switch my scenes and all this other crap. And I'm just figuring out there's automations that can be plugged into this. Hence why I got the USB thing. Yeah. Yesterday, I just found out about if this, then that. 
Oh, <laughs> I just found out about it. And I was like, what? <laughs> you mean to tell me that I don't have to sit here and manually type in all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I can have a, a bot or something do it for me? You, man, where have I been living? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many. There's so many. And, and I feel bad when I think of... Um, you know, console streamers, people who only have like a PS4 and they, <laughs> and they have a t- the Twitch app. And then I, I get comments from them on my YouTube videos. They're like, yeah, I'm streaming from PS4. How do I do this? And every time I'm like, <laughs> you can't sell your PS4, <laughs> buy a PC. <laughs> it's horrible. It's, it's, uh, but it's cool to see how, mm-hmm. how many things are available and there's more and more coming out and you have to keep up and it's, it's cool. If you're really a fan of the process, it's it's a cool feeling every time there's a new thing that comes out. And mm-hmm. and uh, um, companies, there's competition between companies that are trying to come out yeah. with, with better stuff for, for the consumer. It's it's great. It's it's mm-hmm. really great. Unfortunately, okay. Twitch is not part of the this whole competition thing. Twitch, they know they're they're up there and they don't have to do yeah. <laughs> they don't have to do shit for us. No, they killed Mixer. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, pretty much. I mean, Mixer kind of killed itself, to but, be fair. Yeah, I mean, it was a Microsoft property. They they randomly <laughs> kill shit all the time, you know? Yeah, also, like, Microsoft hasn't had anything that is, like, any social platform no. that, that's popular since Nothing. MSN MSN well, Messenger? Was that even? I think yeah, they bought. Yeah. Microsoft had to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They bought Skype, and yeah. they... And then and Skype then they, was behind yeah. the curve. Yeah. Skype had what like a 10 year head start and it's just like it's still behind right now. Yep. (laughs) That's why by the way, that's why when you told me this was gonna be Skype, I was like, oh no. (laughs) I was like, I'm not downloading Skype. (laughs) And and that and then that was another thing. I mean that that's a part of that's a part of my learning process because when I started (laughs) when I started four or five years ago or whatever, Mm. that was that's my main jam, Skype, because I mean Zoom wasn't a thing, you know, uh, fucking what Google meetings was trash or, or <laughs> hangouts or whatever the hell you want to yeah. call it. So, I mean, Skype was king. I mean, Skype came native on the Xbox. You can Skype with my friends in Japan. Yeah, and all true. That. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that's all I really knew. And then, um, and it was the same shit. You know how we was talking about this RGB lights <laughs> and all this other crap. I was like, man, fuck that Zoom shit, man. I got <laughs> Skype. You know, do all that same shit on there. And then I got in there, start using Zoom. Somebody sent me a link to be a guest. And I was like, oh, shit. This is way better. <laughs> and then uh, um, another one, um, the other one that I pitched to you, because it was more like, oh, yeah, we're going to use Skype. And then it was like, dot, 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 dot. Oh, but we can use StreamYard or uh, Zoom, too. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Stream, StreamYard. Yeah, never, StreamYard never is, um, it. yeah, it's fairly new. It was something that I, I kind of happened to um, come across the um, same way that I came across Zoom. I was a guest on someone's show, and they sent me a link to the thing. Oh. It's kind of like Zoom, but I feel like StreamYard is far superior right now. Oh, I mean, okay. It has some of the same features. You can um, change your background if, you want, if you're into that type of shit. But um, what StreamYard allows you to do if you get to certain tier, it allows you to add overlays. It allows oh. you to br- market and brand your content. So, like, I can make an overlay for our chat, and um, I can put my this my logo, like in the corner or whatever, like how you you would get from Skype or other paid places. And mm-hmm. also, it allows you to broadcast to other social media platforms. Oh, okay. So from Streamyard, I can broadcast to you know if you go with the highest tier, I believe you can go up to eight different platforms at once so i can broadcast to youtube freaking twitter twitch facebook and whatever else that you know they're compatible with all at the same time and what is also cool about that with Streamyard, it'll not sponsored by Streamyard, by the way i wish i was not yet (laughs) not yet yeah but um what is also cool whatever platform that you're live streaming on at the time you can pull in comments from each one in one chat and you can display them on the screen. So you, um, whoever's watching, they can see the comments and you can oh. answer the comments with, with them displayed on the TV. So they That's do cool. a lot of cool shit. 
stream y'all. I have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dope. It it is. I mean, um, you do better paying by the year if you can, because the high end it allows you to um, capture 4K. I mean, not 4K. I wish it was 4K. Uh, 1080p. You can um, record without going live because if you have the free version, you can um, stream to one platform, okay. and um, you have to stream to record. Okay, I see. you can't just record without streaming. Yeah, like if you get the other tiers, you can just solely record and not have to stream it out nowhere. And then you get that ugly ass duck if you get the free version. You get that oh. stream, you get that stream yard logo like up here in the corner, oh, and you can't man. dodge it. You're trying to get around it and shit. <laughs> Whatever. But I found a trick. I, I, I recorded, I, I kept the video, I recorded it, and I put it in OBS, and I put all my layouts over it, and I cut the oh. duck out. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that too. There's a, like right now, I'm using a DSLR as my webcam, and I'm using a Sparkle Cam. Mm -hmm. And the free version has like a huge, chunky logo. And I used to record my videos with it. And I would like stand back, <laughs> so yeah, my so head was under, and then I cropped it. And since it's a DSLR, the quality still looked good. Mm -hmm. So I was, I did that for like a year before I paid for like it's a fifty dollar license, <laughs> and you have it forever. But oh, I didn't yeah. have fifty dollars to to invest in my YouTube channel, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah, and we kind of go back to one of the things that you were hitting on, or you know, people watch streams and whatnot, and they see us with the RGB lights. It's like, oh, that would make us. Special. We got to get RGB lights and all this other crap too, but um, it, it it does heavily weigh on what your tastes are. You know, I I do agree with that because mm. um, I seen somebody fall into that trap. It's like, man, I got all the crazy lights, I got all the gear and everything, and you know, I don't even use half of this shit. <laughs> you know, or, yeah. And it's just I don't I don't know because like um, people come to me. At, here and there and they ask me uh you know hey man i'm thinking about starting a podcast i mean what gear you think i should get i was like you got a cell phone right because i mean me personally when i first started i had an ipad mini and a usb microphone and i and i went in my closet because i had nowhere else to record and you know so good soundproofing <laughs> the hell yeah i had all them coats and every everything yeah. in there good good noise dampening and <laughs> that's how i did it i just I just did it. You know, that's that's my first thing. If you're thinking about doing it, just do it. Record a couple of test episodes and whatnot. You know, just get a feel of recording, talking into a microphone or some kind of recording device and see if it's for you. You know, because how often do you go back and listen to your first stream? <laughs> I try to avoid that, to be honest. <laughs> I do it sometimes, but uh. <laughs> I remind myself of it daily. Uh, I'll go back and listen to that first episode and count how many times I said podcast. Because oh. I, I said it, I was like, this is the podcast and this is my podcast. And oh. you're listening to the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. And it's a podcast to where I talk um, in a, a podcast. <laughs> and it was, it was horrible, man. I think every anniversary show, I play a clip from it. And, oh. <laughs> and it's just to be like hey man you're not there no more you, you <laughs> you're a little bit better yeah that's good because like that's i think that's when you really well that's when you were a podcaster basically it's it's that moment where you started doing it yeah because when people buy all the gear and they prepare and they watch all the tutorials you're never like a streamer until you start streaming yeah um i to this day i still have people I, I try to warn them, but I still have people in my Discord who are like, oh, I just dropped 10K in gear. I'm going to start streaming soon. I'm like, have you ever sat down in front of a camera for three hours without no one watching you? Do you it, until you've experienced this, you'll, you won't know if streaming is for you or not. You won't know how soul-crushing uh, it can be because <laughs> yeah. now you're sitting with your gaming chair and all this stuff and – and no one's talking in your chat and you <laughs> you feel like dying until yeah. you felt that you shouldn't invest anything i say yeah that, with that, your phone yeah that that's exactly what i wind up doing i was sitting there um the first stream that i did on twitch and i knew nobody was going to show up because i didn't really publicize it too much and it was just more of a thing because like 
with Twitch, there's no lobby to where you can just turn things on and just try to, no yeah. motherfucker, you gotta hit that live button. <laughs> and yeah. um, I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> classic. And then my TV is up here. Cause, oh. I, Cause I do do console. So I'm mm. like this and everybody, whoever will pop in and they're just looking at my Adam's out <laughs> because my TV is up here and everything. Oh and I'm man. Just, I'm, just, I'm just clicking away. I'm just clicking away, <laughs> looking at my TV. And then I was like, whoa. And then I looked down at the camera and said, man, they looking at all my neck and shit. So I, I get way back here. <laughs> And then now nobody can barely hear me and shit. Oh, and man. Come back up here. <laughs> but I figured it out because I got two monitors that sit in front of me. And um, yeah, I just big out. I just big up the OBS screen because I got it. Because you talk about console streamers. I am a console mm. streamer. And the way that I figured it out, which made sense to me, I didn't tutorial it. I just kind of applied a little bit of common sense. I was like, wait a minute. What if I got an HDMI splitter? I was like, all right, so this is what I did. I just, because um, I mounted this TV on this wall up here because I, I built this room just for my podcast and shenanigans. Oh, nice. So I was like, man, I'm going to have to drag a lot of cables through this wall because I, I mounted it and hit all the cables in the wall. I said, like, I'm going to have to run a lot of cable through this wall if I want to hook up an original Xbox, an Xbox, a PlayStation, and a Switch. So that's four additional HDMI cables I got to run through there to the TV. I was like, HDMI switch. All right, I can run one cable through the wall down to the switch, put all four consoles on the switch, and then I can take that switch and run it into a capture code. So I got Elgato capture code <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I made my wife pay for. And nice. <laughs> got it in the computer. I hooked all that crap up, and it's great. But the only thing is, for me at least, I mean, I don't know all the configuration shit but the 4k capture software that's here on the computer is lag as hell <laughs> is it yeah so like for me when i play it on the tv fine perfect you know you mm -hmm. know I, I hit the left and go left i hit the yeah. right it go right but um me playing it on the 4k capture software here on the computer is just like off so like i hit Hit the left. Oh, yeah. There's a delay. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was throwing me off. So when I would stream on OBS, because, you know, Elgato is integrated with OBS, it was no lag. So I would just take my OBS screen and make it full screen on my desktop, <laughs> and I would just play it here. Oh. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, I'm just like, now I'm here looking at the screen instead of, yeah, just constantly critiquing my Adam's apple, <laughs> checking my, my 5 o'clock shadow and all that crap. <laughs> that's smart that's actually smart i've never i don't think i've ever um even thought about like the the splitter that goes into the capture card that's actually really there's only dope. one drawback that i've run into and um it's only with the xbox one x if um if i don't turn the tv on before i initiate the the capture card software the Xbox won't show up on oh. my TV. It won't show up on my TV. It'll show up here, but it won't show up on my TV. It's and like always um, some weird thing like that. It's and, weird. And, <laughs> and another drawback is, let's just say I don't want to stream that day. I just want to play my consoles. I have to turn on the computer to play it on the oh. TV. Oh. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's the oh, two man. that's the two drawbacks to my yeah. setup right now. The only other thing that I can think about to rectify it is. They have a HDMI split that has two outs. So yeah. one can go to the capture card and one can go directly into the TV instead of going through the capture card to get. Yeah. You know, so there's that. I haven't tried that yet, but it's on the, it's on the brain. It's on the brain. It's on the mind. <laughs> it's on the wish list. Exactly. Which you can go to <laughs> randomrob.com and look up <laughs> my Amazon wish list. And if you want to donate equipment to the show, you can do as such. <laughs> But um, <laughs> as far as like your stream and everything and uh, you know the content that you produce and whatnot, what is the favorite, your favorite part of it, your favorite aspect of either the YouTube or the Twitch? Uh, I think it's it's a, it's a pretty hard uh, question because there's there's so many things that I 
individually like. Mm -hmm. But um, being a content creator is like, it's the freedom, I I feel like. It's the freedom of being creative. Mm -hmm. I really, like my whole life was dedicated to one day I want to be free to create whatever I want. And yeah. to this day, I still fight for, for that. Right. And, and I feel like I've, I'm, I'm as far as possible that I can be in, into this, this dream. Mm-hmm. And um, for example, on Twitch, a couple months ago, I, um, I started my stream. So I'm on the starting soon screen mm-hmm. and, you know, I have like clips playing, entertaining people while I prepare and post on Twitter that I'm live and stuff like that. And um, I switched the scene from starting soon to my face and I realized my mic was muted. <laughs> I'm doing when it I really, lot. yeah, that that happens, you know. And and like by then, I, I had been streaming for like six years, so I, I had like no real excuses. But um, not six years, not six years, like three, three, four years. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I wonder if I didn't speak for like the first hour of my stream, mm-hmm. like on purpose. Yeah. Can I still be entertaining? Can I make it happen? so that my stream is still not boring mm-hmm. and that people still stay in chat and then they still talk in chat. Mm-hmm. And like in that moment, I said, I, I give myself the, the, this challenge mm-hmm. and I went with it. I went with it. I enabled uh, text-to-speech for my chat. So everything they were typing, they mm-hmm. were hearing the, the robot reading it. <laughs> uh, sometimes you throw like a, like a, a, um, a Spanish voice in there. So it reads all the thing like funny and stuff like that. I was playing music, I was dancing, chat was going wild. And for one full hour, I did not say a single word. And the stream was amazing. <laughs> the stream was amazing. It was great. So I, I love that that freedom. You know, you can't just show up to work and, and improvise like that. You can't yeah. be like, hey, what if I didn't talk to customers today? No, <laughs> you're going to get fired. <laughs> oh, man, I, I kind of uh, feel like that. On most days at my job, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's, and it's yeah. weird too because you talk about the different languages and everything. It, I, I work at a place to where just about everybody come there speak Spanish, and I don't. So, oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I speak enough to get by. You know, if yeah, you, if you drop me off in Mexico or whatever, I, I probably won't make it. I could probably get some food or something like that, but I mean, to hold a whole conversation and try to get places, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just Same. like. People come there for customer support, and they're like, uh, "Habla español." I was like, "Poquito español." And then it's just like I'm sitting there trying to piece stuff together. Uh, uh, muy información uh, over there, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it, it, it's, it's just trying to communicate with people. Yes, it's just in itself. It's just a talent and a skill because oh, absolutely what what i've learned about um the spanish language from you know my everyday job or whatnot you could tell in the body language a lot of the times what they're trying to convey mm-hmm. and whatnot so i mean i i believe that kind of translates to streaming as well because if i'm here hunched over in my chair bad <laughs> posture and shit just playing games or whatever i mean you like <laughs> yeah that's you know? that's that's one you... of the things i try to communicate with with my um with my viewers it's like it's the whole you know you being like a viewer and and just a consumer or or just you know you you entertain yourself by watching other streamers you don't necessarily know precisely mm-hmm. what you like you know yeah. you you don't necessarily cuz you don't you don't think about that you know you don't you don't think about how uh, um, the weatherman always has a suit on. You don't know what effect it has on you. It's just like, yeah. that's just how it is. But if someone starts a weather channel and then they come up with like, you know, with a, <laughs> with, with wearing like a sports uh, outfit, it would be weird. You would be like, yeah. I don't, I can't take that guy seriously. And you're like, oh, well, it's a figure of authority and it makes it, it makes people look more likable when they they're presentable, you know? So that's really something that I'm trying to communicate with my viewers is all the psychology behind, you know, I, I mentioned like what words to use when you're introducing yourself to your viewers and what to put in your panels. There are people, for example, that, that, um, and I know that other stream gurus or stream coaches give that advice. They tell them, um, put your goals in your panels, you know, let, let people know what your goals are. So I go on people's channels and I see, you know, people with 
three followers mm-hmm. uh, with a list of goals, and their goals are uh, um, reach a thousand followers, become Twitch partner, make make this full time. And, and I'm like, what are you telling the viewer? You know, yeah. <laughs> those are people. A thousand followers, like reach a thousand. If you said reach a thousand people, it sounds more human. You know, it yeah. sounds more appealing it, it's like it's cool to have those goals but have them on a piece of paper near you don't don't you don't have to tell people that yeah. imagine if netflix was was boasting about how much money they're making you know no they'll show you a trailer they'll get you excited and you're, yeah. you'll pay for that subscription you know yeah. but um it's something when it comes to twitch streams it's it's um it's a community it's a it's an activity where mm-hmm. I feel like we're far behind everyone else when it comes to making content online. Mm-hmm. Um, the gaming, the streaming community is so, so far behind. You know, they, they, they haven't, there's a lot of things that have, that have been happening on the internet with content creators that we can't even begin to comprehend yet. And, and it's so hard to communicate that with people, you know, they, they, there's a lot of people in that, that gaming community that still think that, you know, companies are just people, you know, they're, they're with, that are doing things out of the goodness of their hearts. They're like, oh, Twitch, <laughs> yeah, right. should, Twitch should promote small streamers. Like, well, why the fuck would they do that? <laughs> you, know? you know, why shit. would they do that? I mean, I mean, if that was the case, man, Walmart would have sponsored me a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's crazy some of the things that I hear, but I also understand that hey, you know, like every every kid that plays Fortnite, for example, can can start a Twitch channel. So they're not gonna know much about like marketing and all the psychology mm-hmm. of things that it's been decades since you know big companies have been perfecting the art of entertainment to make you sit down and watch that TV. You know, it's yeah. not a coincidence that all like most most grandmas on in the world are gonna sit down and watch the game show. It's it was designed for that, you know? So yeah. I try to bring that knowledge into, into Twitch. And, and, and sometimes I feel ridiculous trying to explain like to 14 year, year olds, don't use that word, use that word. And then like the psychology, make people bond with you, make them, it, it sounds ridiculous, but at the end of the day, it's still entertainment. Entertainment is not new. Twitch is not a new thing. Broadcasting no. is not new. Um, all the bells and whistles, those are not new. Like other people have done it before and we need yeah. to draw inspiration from them instead of other streamers, basically. Yeah, I get it. Cause like um, a kind of, a thing that irks me, but I understand it as well. Cause we see here in our era, a motherfucker like Joe Rogan was signing what a like hundred million dollar deal with Spotify for his podcast or whatever. And here I am struggling with my shit. <laughs> over, you know, and just because this motherfucker Joe Rogan, he did some fear factor shit and did some announcing on the UFC <laughs> show, they won't give him a hundred million dollars and shit. <laughs> motherfucker, I sit here and can talk three hours with a motherfucker all day too, but I'm not Joe Rogan. So, you know, I, I can't get none of that love. And what what killed me is just like people don't take that into account. They just see Joe Rogan making all this money and they be like, hey. I'm going to start a podcast tomorrow, make all kinds of money, <laughs> you know? But I had a guy that approached me at my work, you know? I don't let too many people know that I do this at work because I don't want them to fucking bug me or whatever. I go, yeah. just want to go to work, do my damn job, and go the fuck home or whatever. But the guy, one guy, he always freaking peek boo in my window and finding some shit <laughs> or whatever. I was just happening to, like, edit a video on my phone or some crap like that, and he walked in and he heard me talk. He said, oh, you got a podcast? Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me you found me out <laughs> and i was like yeah and i just kind of brushed over there oh yeah i'm gonna go do a round real quick i'll be back <laughs> and, you know and then a couple of days later he was like i'm thinking about starting the podcast i was like i was like do it you know that was just like to get him off my back i was like do it but i yeah. would tell anybody <laughs> i would tell anybody that though but i was like mm. just do it because i mean the only way you'll figure out if you're made for it or if you like it is if you do it so I was like, yeah, go ahead, do it. And then a couple of days that day, he's like, are you making any money off your podcast? Yeah. I was like, mm, get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> I was like, no. I mean, it's, it's yes and no, but mostly no. But, but I mean, if for me, starting this podcast was um, a couple of things. Um, I was in the military. I was getting out you know, when I was starting this up, I was getting out of the military and, you know, wind, that time winding down, 
I was just like, I wanted to write a book about all the things that I've done, you know, all the people that I met and, you know, have us all tell stories and make a book. But mm-hmm. other than this cool ass keyboard lighting up and shit, I don't like to use it to type words <laughs> and shit, you know, so writing a book and sitting down and having that type of focus wasn't for me. But at the time I was listening to so many podcasts and, you know, the pod father is fucking Kevin Smith and that punk motherfucker Joe Rogan. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I would listen to Kevin Smith and all his friends and they got all these podcasts. I was like, man, they're having a freaking good time. They're talking about their past and everything. I was like, that's what I wanted to do with my book. So got the little freaking iPad mini, found me a audio technical USB microphone, plug, got me up because I got Apple. So I got to get dongles and shit. Oh, and man. <laughs> I figured it out. And during lunch breaks, I would bring the recorder set up in. And, you know, when we just be jaw jacking or whatever, hit the record button. And that's, that's how that started. But more of it was like, I did 16 years in the military. You know, it's a singular train of thought in that. You know, you come here, you hard, you do your job, you know, you tell other motherfuckers how to do their job and shit. And then you go home and just to be a normal person, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just really cut that shit off. <laughs> so me transitioning out of the military and starting this podcast was just like the decompression stages. It was just like, I did this thing consecutively for 16 years and now I don't have this anymore. So now it's just, who am I now? (laughs) So it was rediscovering myself, you know, now that I can, I don't have to worry about wearing the same uniform every fucking day. I can try to wear clothes now. Cause if you go look (laughs) at my closet, it's just like, a couple shirts, <laughs> two pair of pants, because I wore the same shit every day for 16 years, you know? Yeah. I didn't really need clothes, because, damn, I spent all goddamn day at work. Then I come home, you know, talk with my wife, play with the kids, eat some food, go the fuck to sleep, wake up, do it all over again. That's 16-year cycle. So, fuck clothes, <laughs> you know? They gave me clothes. So, yeah. now it was rediscovering my style, because I went in straight out of high school. So, I didn't know shit beforehand, military make me into this person and then i get out it's like oh man i can't wear my my uniform (laughs) as a civilian (laughs) no more so now i gotta figure out my style and you know the type of clothes that i like and all kind of things i mean i got a wife to help dress me and everything but she'd be picking them slim pants and i mean (laughs) you squeezing me down low i can't be wearing that shit (laughs) but the whole process of this podcasting thing and just branching out into other forms of medium, whatever, is just a rediscovering of me, testing myself as a human being to see if I can just hang with gal level, be on your level <laughs> and talk with you and everything. And, you know, well, it's happening, so you know? <laughs> congrats. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what it was for me because, like, military is just like, hey, motherfucker, go do this because I said so. I'm in charge, God damn it. But you can't come out here in the real world and just do that with a normal person. Yeah. Hey, motherfucker. I'm in line here. Go stand over there. Bitch. <laughs> we fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? True. <laughs> so, you know, it's just crazy. <laughs> and, you know, this should be the process. What I, what I suggest to anybody that's starting out in any medium, it, I, me personally, I feel like this should be the process. People should see you struggle and use this busted ass equipment and they're going to work your way up to the freaking new mixer and the new computer and yeah the rgb lights <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird for me because like for, for some of my video i gotta like i gotta dial it down like i i grew uh through the years i i, I grew to this guy who can you know i can afford certain things now mm-hmm. but i my message is still the same it's still hey if you're broke you can still do it yeah so sometimes i'm like oh, shit, I used my 3D printer in my last video. Let me just use cardboard this time. <laughs> you know, I, I get that not everyone has a 3D printer. And it's weird because, like, I know what they feel like. Yeah, so I have to step in now. Quick. Pretty much, pretty <laughs> much. So, like, um, when I use my 3D printer on, on DIY projects, people complain in my comments. And at first, I got mad. I was like, 3D printers aren't, aren't expensive anymore and stuff like that. But I was like, 
damn, if it would, if that was me three years ago, I yeah. would have said the same thing in the comments. So it's like, you know what? Today, <laughs> we're going to use this busted ass box cutter and some cardboard. <laughs> you have no excuses now. <laughs> yeah. Cereal boxes to make stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I find myself doing as well. But like, I'm kind of impatient too. <laughs> so by episode five, I done went full blown mixer and extra <laughs> microphone and shit. And I was like, yeah, because I mean, the iPad and um, microphone setup was good for the time, but I wanted to have guests and I couldn't do Skype and record wow. screens and all that stuff at the time yeah. with that iOS and all that stuff. I could probably do it now because of the, the how they advanced. And everything. Yeah. But then I couldn't do that. So I, I required a mixer in some other type of way mm. to, you know, record and all kind of junk. So, I mean, I learned about virtual cables and whatnot. Oh, God. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because what I found out real quick, once I got all the shit, I was like, man, I got a, I got me a laptop now and I got this USB microphone. So that's one. If I have a guest at the house, I need another microphone. So let me get two USB microphones and plug in this laptop. Now, now, <laughs> it don't work that way. It only <laughs> it's not reads, that easy. <laughs> yeah, it, it only reads one USB microphone at a time. So yeah. you get download the virtual cable and you know <sighs> trick the computer to think that it got another microphone port, but it don't. And I just like fuck it, I'm gonna get a mixer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of hate the whole um, uh, software audio separation yeah. with virtual cable. I hate that so much. Uh, I've been able to avoid it. Something that a lot of people don't know because they see me, you know, they see me on YouTube explaining, hey, here's how you can do this, you can do that, and they think that I have this complex and i'm this mastermind who's using so many things on another level the truth is i think i have the, the simplest level, though. <laughs> yes the, <gal> level. <laughs> the thing is i have i think i have one of the simplest setups of of most people that i meet like i keep it super super simple because i don't want the whole setup to get in my way of being me basically i know people come here they watch me for 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 me so if i'm if I'm here tinkering with this and that, or, or this doesn't work and now that doesn't work. And like, I can't be me. I, I usually, I use this, this uh, um, analogy. I tell people on stream, you're supposed to be funny. You're supposed to be welcoming. You're supposed to be witty. You're supposed to be sassy. You're supposed to be all that. You're supposed to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. But if you set up your stream to be like a, a, a freaking, uh, <laughs> a freaking airplane cockpit or something where you <laughs> have a bunch of buttons, how are you going to be funny at the same time? You know, yeah. like it's, it's it, even pilots struggle to do that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you can't, you, you have to let be able to breathe. And mm -hmm. also like the more complex your setup is, the more things can go wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> the whole virtual cab cable thing. You know, I, I see new streamers being like, how do I separate my, my game audio from my desktop audio from my mic? And, and I'm like, dude, just stream. Like, listen yeah. to it, listen back to your stream, set up the levels, keep them there. Just don't move them. Because if, cause if your software, there's a software called Voice Meter that people yeah. are routing their, their mic into and then back into. Their yeah. I'm like, if Voice Meter messes up, if Windows messes it up, you don't have a mic. <laughs> That's not something that I can afford to be like, oh, well, today I don't have a mic because, you know, things are not working. Mm -hmm. um, but in the same time, that's also why things like uh mixers are cool like i'm yeah. i used to be a dj so i'm very much into like physical stuff like i want to turn that knob if i want like yeah. uh, more bass or whatever i i don't trust my computer to do shit <laughs> yeah. i don't trust windows to, to take care of that i, I want to do it manually so sometimes yeah but buying like not letting the gears limit um put limitations on you but sometimes you you have to buy the gear according to the workflow that you want to have. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely uh, that you don't have to buy the gear just because that's everyone, what everyone else is doing, because mm -hmm. you know, it, it might not, you might not adapt to it. Maybe you're going to do what everyone is recommending and then you have it and you realize it's, I don't like that. That, that yeah. stresses me out. There's too many buttons. <laughs> yeah. So, so like it's, it's coming up on five years for me. So I, I decided to upgrade my mixer, made my wife buy it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it was a heavy, heavy debate because I mean, as long as podcasts been out, podcasts are starting to catch on now, which is weird to mm. me or whatever. So 
there are starting to make gear that is, you know, themed toward podcasting specific. So they got the roadcaster freaking uh, yeah. mixer board that's out now. And then they have the Zoom live track L8. So these were, you know, my decisions that I was going to come up on. Because right now, well, not right now. I used to have this big monstrosity over here. Oh, that's Beringer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Freaking Beringer, man. <laughs> yeah, this, this was my first recommendation. So this was the first one that I got. This was the first one I went with. It, it served me well, but it was time to time to upgrade. Yeah. So, that was my choice. And I got on YouTube, as I do. And I was just like, uh, which mixer is better? And I got all these comparison videos. And then you can tell which ones that are sponsored by the other one or whoever gave them yeah. the free product. Because, yeah, this one is good here, 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 and here. But you need to come mm -hmm. over here because this does all this and this and this. Yeah. And this. Yeah, I mean, that does that too, but fuck that. But this does. <laughs> I was like, okay. Well, I can't find a, a biased video. But what sold it for me, I went with the, um, the Zoom, oh. is if I have guests in here, because I got enough room for two other people, mm. I can hook this mixer to that mixer, and they can have their own shit over there with their own oh. microphones and all kind of stuff. Instead of me running long-ass cables, yeah, phone cords and all that, I can have, that, that'll be a whole separate interface for them over there, and I have my own one here. Um, both of them are great because you can take them out and be mobile and stuff. They run off batteries. Yeah. And all kind of stuff. They got a built-in, you know, slot for SD cards. So, I mean, whenever we can go outside again. Because um, <laughs> last year, 2019, was a good year for me podcasting-wise because I was actually, I took the next step was for me to go out into the world and meet people. So yeah. I'd never been to any conventions or anything, or like a Comic-Con or nothing like that. So 2019 was my first convention that I ever went to. And I took that big Behringer bitch with me to <laughs> our convention out here, Comic Palooza. And I tried to set it up and do the things. And <laughs> we got through it, but I couldn't figure it all out. I had somebody help Aww. me. But we got yeah. it set up. We did a, I did my first live show at a convention on the floor with cosplayers Yo. walking around and all kinds of stuff. And it was freaking cool. So ever since then, I had the bug. Every other convention that I submitted to and I got accepted to, I was there. I was just there taking pictures, being the guy, shaking hands and kissing babies. <laughs> and all kind of, or with shaking babies and kissing hands. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was really enjoying that. So when it was coming time for the upgrade, that's why I was looking for one of these two because it's highly portable, run off batteries. I didn't have yeah. to worry about all them cords and everything. But then there's like, hey, bitches, Corona, stay in the house. I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> that's bad luck on there. Yeah. But I mean, how has that affected you? I mean, are you normally a homebody or do you like to get out and do shit? I mean, I've uh, seen some of the old videos, the uh, compilations. <laughs> and by, by the way, sir, I was looking through one of them compilations. And he was in there with a, a young lady or whatnot. Y'all sitting around a table doing shenanigans and shit. And you got up out your chair. And this whole shit was ate the hell up. We had phone coming oh. out. <laughs> the velvet was ripped off. I was like, what the hell is happening? She still has the chair. And it's, 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 it's even worse now. <laughs> Um, probably the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in. To be fair, <laughs> I understand why she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to throw throw it away. Nostalgia, yeah. man. Humble yeah. beginnings. <laughs> so, like, they have a cat. So, um, oh boy, they they feel like any chair they buy is gonna end up like this one. So, might as well keep it. <laughs> you didn't put the universal solvent on there, man. You got to that duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I I don't I don't usually go out a lot but I, I have like little bursts of oh my god i want to go out you know <laughs> and then i just travel usually so um with the whole pandemic stuff it didn't affect me that much mm -hmm. the only thing that was um that was annoying is that it was very bad timing it was one yeah. of those periods where i was like man i can't be staying <laughs> at home so much i need to travel the world i have the i have the means to do it now i haven't been out in a while i got and then france went on lockdown 
I was like, well, yeah. what? <laughs> so it was kind of annoying. But other than that, um, you know, with my work, it's, it's, it was even better during uh, quarantine because, you know, people were at home watching my YouTube videos. People were, were losing their jobs and were trying to be content creators and be, and be Twitch streamers. So it, it was a huge boost in, in views and, and I got to meet a lot of new people, new people in the, in the industry. So it's, uh, it was cool, but I still, I still want to travel. So it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of I mean, too bad. Th- th- this room is what the quarantine brung me as well. <laughs> Just like, you know, sitting in the house for that brief moment of time I had. You know, I- I'm gonna tell you the real reason how this room got built. Two years ago, um, I had an idea to, you know, put something like this together. You know, we put the framework in and everything, but um, you know, just life shit was happening. You know, I had, to, mm. I had some bills I needed to take care of that took priority over this. You know, family shit happened at, that took priority over this. So it just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And then I yeah. was just like, all right, I'll, I'll pay somebody to do it, you know? And then, you know, that was a whole hullabaloo. So it just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Quarantine come around. Me and my old lady get in an argument. Piss me the fuck off. <laughs> so... I threw myself in the garage here because this is where this is built at. I just started building shit, uh. <laughs> you know. So, the, the, so we got mad at each other during the quarant- when the quarantine first started, and you know, kind of stir crazy and shit. She pissed me off, and I just came here and started building shit. <laughs> <laughs> so the quarantine brought me this room, and that's I got mad at my wife, and I started building me a room so I could get the fuck away from her. <laughs> that's some real dad shit right there. <laughs> yeah, and it, I mean, and. What I was telling people about this this space that I built for me is like it's the same as this process that we're talking about now with uh, you know finding your niche in uh, social media and building your channel and your following and everything. For this, for me to put this together, I had to learn this shit because it was a native to me. It's not something yeah. that I'd done on a uh, regular basis. My father could do this stuff, and he tried to show me as a child, but as a normal child, I was like, you know, yeah. <laughs> You got it, Dad. You can. Move it. I'm, just, I'm gonna go play Xbox, or <laughs> Nintendo, or some shit. So he, yeah. he he tried to give me the tools, but I, you know, I I chose not to, you know, pay attention. So that was on me. But getting on YouTube, researching the right materials and everything, and to come into to picking the stuff in hindsight is like I went way over than what I needed. Like how you were saying, oh, people going there yeah. right off bat and they buy the high end shit. Yeah, and they go on. They want to build a palace. And everything, and they just need, you know, some of the basics. And yeah. I, I tell you what, I also I came out of this. I, I got a whole slew of tools that I never had before that I got now, then I probably won't never use again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't, there's one thing I won't regret though. I got a, a Brad nail, basically a nail gun. Oh, yeah. I, I love the shit out of that boy. <laughs> I wish I, I still want one. Oh, I'm, I'm not doing anything that requires a Brad nailer, but I still want, I, I really want to buy one. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I got a shelf. Yeah, if you can see it where the pop vinyls and everything is sitting on. Uh-huh. I built that. So I cut the wood out. I got that Brad nailer. Doom, 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 doom. And whew, <laughs> So simple, so easy. It was just like uh, almost Lego. <laughs> just fit together, perfect. You know. Yeah, I had to start. I had to. I had to learn that stuff too. Like I can't tell you how many hours I spent watching like people doing proper woodworking. And I live yeah. in. That's like that's that's the main room. Like right there, that's my bed. <laughs> that's where I sleep. So I live in an apartment. I'm in like on the second floor. So I can't have. You know, I can't be doing woodworking yeah. with like table saws and stuff like that. So I, I kept watching those videos and learning and learning and learning. And I was like, is it impossible? You know, mm. uh, I saw people on the internet saying, hey, you have an apartment. You can't be doing woodworking. So I was like, I, I need it. I, I want to do it. So <laughs> yeah, I bought a couple of uh, hand saws <laughs> and I started building stuff. I, I, I messed up a lot. But uh, today I just got done like doing um my, my, my kitchen, I redid my whole kitchen, installed like new um, countertops and stuff like that. And I did it. I did it. I, I'll be at 2 a.m. hand sawing wood <laughs> in my apartment. <laughs> oh, dog, you should, you should put that on stream. Just you. <laughs> Don't say True. nothing for an hour either. Just sit there and just <laughs> stare into the camera. And just be like, people would watch. I swear to God, people would watch. <laughs> 
We will. <laughs> so, I mean, for you, you know, you, you settled on your first project. You wanted to do something and everything. Tell me about that anxiety of cutting the first piece or that going um, you know, just measuring out the first cut and everything. Tell me the anxiety that came back. Cause I know I had hell of a lot. I, I heard like so many YouTubers be like, uh, measure twice, cut once, measure twice. I measured like five times and I still messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and I still messed up. I'm like, that, that, this thing is bullshit. They say measure twice. I measured five times. I should have really had it, but no, no, I, I messed up. Like, uh, things don't work the way you think they would like, different type of woods it's yeah it's great it's great but it's it's really like it i think it has to do with personality you know i i feel like you know most people are are, are not like that you know most people problem solving is like the best skill to have you know yeah. if people ask you what what is the one skill you need to have it's it's problem solving because if you crumble when there's obstacles like you're mm. you're not getting far <laughs> you're really yeah. not getting far um i know people who freak out like they really 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 freak out when there's the slightest bit of of difficulty you know yeah. technical difficulty or or whatever like there's a accident happens and and they just completely shut down and freak out and you're like where this is not going to be the last one. You know that. Right? Know. There's <laughs> so, many more to come. Yeah, there's so many more. So better be prepared and, and learn how to handle it and get it done and, and get it fixed, basically. And I feel like that has helped me a lot with the whole YouTube stuff. And uh, for example, one day I had this, um, well, when I, first, when I first got monetized on YouTube, because back then you only needed 100 subs on YouTube so, yeah. to start making money. So first month, I hit 100 subs. I'm super, it, it's like I had been doing YouTube for like two years before I hit my 100 sub. I wasn't doing it seriously though, but still. Yeah. First month, I'm monetized. I'm happy. I get like an email from YouTube saying they sent me money. It was 63 cents and I was so happy. I was so happy because it was the first time in my life that something that I did for fun Paid made off, money. Yeah. You know, it was amazing. It's to this day, I still think about it. I'm like, that's insane that you can just be pick anything, enjoy the whole process, make a video, just post it, and then they pay you. Like, that's crazy. So um, I got paid 63 cents. And then the next month, it was like February, February or something. Um, YouTube changed their rules. They were like, oh, now you need a thousand subs, 4,000 watch time in, an, in, an, in, the last, uh, in the last year. And, and basically all those new requirements. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm partnered. I'm fine. There's no, and they were like, and we're kicking you out if you don't meet them, <laughs> if yeah, you're already in the yeah. partnership <laughs> program. So I got kicked immediately as I got uh, partnered. Like a lot of people would have quit, you know, because yeah. from a hundred to a thousand, that's knowing that it took me two years to get to a hundred, you know, yeah. it seems just impossible. It seems so, so, so impossible. And I'll admit I was frustrated. I was, I was, I was livid. I was mad. I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe that's happening. Like I'm so unlucky and all of that. But you know, after, after being mad for a couple of minutes, I was like, okay, I need to put in work now. <laughs> I need to get the, uh, to that partner program again. And they were like, okay, now it's February and July. We will start reviewing new applications for people who reach that stuff. And I was like, you know what? From February to July, I'm going to hit a thousand um, subs. And um, back then was around when I actually had quit my job to become a full-time content creator. So sure. when I actually quit my job, I wasn't, I really wasn't making money. Wasn't, so it was out of necessity. It was, mm -hmm. and I, I was like, that's it. That's my last job. I refuse to go find another job. Basically I was, I'm making this work or I'm not me or, 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 you know, i whatever happens, I'm making it work basically. Yeah. Cause if it don't work, you're just going to be eating uh, baguettes under the iPhone <laughs> or <and> shit, right? <laughs> pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. So I worked so hard. I was, there were like periods where for like three weeks straight, I was uploading one video per day. Damn. like exhausting stuff you know not sleeping being like oh my god this needs to go up and stuff like that and and it worked <laughs> it worked i got in the partner program um uh, uh july i think the end of july they put me back in and i think you know i was already getting a lot of views well a lot of views uh and then by by the end of the month they sent me like a a transfer for like a hundred bucks and again i was super happy i was like wow a hundred bucks now i just need to continue making it 
roll until you know I can make like a thousand bucks. That was my that was my goal because like it's like minimum wage here pretty much. So okay. if I can make a thousand bucks with YouTube, basically I I I, I made it. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you can make minimum wage by posting videos, like you you made it at this point. Like you should be really really happy. Um, it took years before I before I got to a thousand. Like I've only recently reached a thousand to be honest. <laughs> but with with YouTube um, working well, my Twitch started working well too. Yeah. Since I do graphic design and I sell digital products, uh, I also give away a lot of digital products for free. So like people want to support me for things like that. And and um, the products that I sell are super cheap. So it's really accessible. I'm talking like, you know, 99 cents overlay yeah. packs and stuff like that. So it's really accessible to everyone. So I think that's why I got a lot of people buying it. And that's how I managed to to get by um but yeah it took it took it took years <laughs> but you um years. you also did photography as well right yeah like that was 100 percent a hot well i got paid for a couple of gigs but it was mostly a hobby i really okay. enjoyed doing like portrait photography and that's also self-thought uh, um fun fact i started photography like 10 years ago mm-hmm. and that was my first camera <laughs> Oh, word. That was my first, first camera. And I still use it to this day. That's the camera I use to, to do streaming. Um, I only bought a new camera, the, the ZV-1, um, this year, like a month ago. It was my first time investing in a new camera since 10 years. Because <laughs> I really like that one. You know, it's uh, mm-hmm. the Canon T2i, um, but it's missing a lot of features now. Those, this, yeah. Everything that's packed into this is crazy to me. It's like... It's like I jumped into the future with this little thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah, because yeah, I didn't want to invest too much money. Yeah, I got um, not the one that I'm using now, but the one above it here. Because I, when I use it on Twitch, I say that's my serious camera. Like, <laughs> this, this one right here is what, 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 what I don't even know what it is. Uh, Logitech. <laughs> Bio or Brio, bro? Or what Brio, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Got one of them. There, Brio, there you go. Brio. Yeah, yeah. That, they, there you go again. There we go again. Talking about damn buying shit. <laughs> but um, I hey, actually want to buy this one. The, well, the, the opportunity <laughs> presented itself because, like, yeah. I, would, I would never go out willingly to purchase something like that. Mm. But I came into some extra cash in like like a, a gift card or some shit. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> oh, I can get that camera. <laughs> so gift card came came in for that. But right now, above it, I have a, a T6i. Then, oh, yeah. Then over here, I got a T3i. In the other room, I got the, basically what I was saying. I ain't trying to brag on my shit. But, oh, um, no, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I fall into these cameras by luck. Because the very first one I had was a Revel XT, big gray camera or whatever. Mm. And um, a dude that I worked with, he was taking pictures and he was getting the next model up or some shit like that for the time. And by then, that one, the one that I got from him was three years old already. He's like, I was like, man, I give you $300 for it right now. (laughs) He's like, man, I got all these extra lenses and all this other stuff. And then I'm about to buy this new camera, man. I can't just sell it to you for $300. He said, like, I was thinking about trading in the Best Buy and getting my new camera. I was like, yeah, let me break it down to you like this. I got $300 cash money in my pocket right now. <laughs> I can give you this $300 cash money right now. And you can take that $300 in cash, put it towards your new purchase. And you can also buy food, pay bills, and <laughs> do other stuff with it. You know, put gas in your car. You just got a new car, right? So this is how I was selling it to him. And I was just like, Let's think about this. You can go to Best Buy and they'll give you some money for it, but it's going to be store credit. You can't buy snacks with that shit in Best Buy. <laughs> you can't. You, I mean, that's how I was spending it to them. I was like, matter yeah. of fact, I've done trade-ins with Best Buy. Let's get on BestBuy.com right now and see how much they're going to offer you for it. <laughs> you get on there, we type it up, put his camera in with all his extra doodads that he said he had. How much do you think they offered him? How much? How much? I, I don't want a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. Three hundred and one dollars. What? <laughs> Three hundred and one dollars <laughs> for Best Buy credit. I was like, and then you looked at it, and then you looked back at me, and I had the money. I was like, <laughs> what you want to do, though? What you want to do? 
and he um and I I bought my first camera off of him, and then Damn. um the and I just liked the the Canon Rebel series so much, and when yeah. I, so that was my first camera. The next one, I think was a a Rebel two T two. Not the not the eye, because the eye got the all the video features and all the fancy shit. Yeah. I think my wife made a bought my mom or my wife might have bought that for me for Christmas. So I, I fell onto that one. I didn't pay for that one. And then this one, the T3i, I was an instructor at um a school before I got out of the military. Mm-hmm. And the kid br- brought it, one of the students brought this camera with them, you know. Yeah. And, um Every time I would see him, because he, he would ask permission to take um, pictures of the training and everything that he's doing, you know, memory book and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, no problem. And I would always mess with him. I'd be like, hey, man, why don't you sell me that camera? He's like, nah. he's like, you know what, Staff on? I'll give it to you when I get ready, when I graduate, when I leave from here. And, you know, we were ha, 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 jokes yeah. and everything. <laughs> so the day came. They graduated. They moved out of the barracks. They was getting on the bus, going to their first duty station to be full-fledged Marines. And he was getting on the bus. And I was like, all right, y'all take it easy. Y'all be safe out there. And it was like a movie, man. The doors closed. And it, like right before the doors closed, his arm stuck out. And he jumped out. <laughs> and he took the lens off the camera and he gave me the body. I was like, word? <laughs> <laughs> For real? <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> and then this one, the T6i. I knew a guy that he was um, doing um, content creation. He just st- got into YouTube, and this was one of the cameras that he used. And he made some good videos. I, I, don't, I don't know if he's tra- planning on getting back into it. He got a big following real fast, but, you know, life shit got in the way, and he just, you know, kind of fell off of it. Yeah. But he was going to get rid of his camera. And I was like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> 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 let, let, let me get that. <laughs> so he wind up selling it to me um, about a year or two ago for four hundred bucks with a battery pack and oh. this big ass light right here. <laughs> this shit. Oh, <laughs> and, and, the, and the tripod joint. Oh my and god, and the battery pack. Yeah, a bag and some other crap came with it. Yeah, four hundred dollars. <laughs> so. I didn't go looking for these things. These things came looking for me. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Now, you're lucky because when I got my T2i, I was, I don't know. I didn't know about like deals like that or even like Craigslist and stuff like that. I yeah. I was like, oh, that's the price of the T2i. It was like 700 euros back then. Yeah. And, and I wasn't making a lot of money. <laughs> uh, uh, and I was like, the T2i is 700 euros. I need to come up with 700 euros. I, I had no choice, you know? And then I ordered it off of um off of canon and uh and i got it but now it's worth like 250 still it's a great camera though what i because i wanted to get a 4k canon and i and that, uh, that's like 1400 dollars camera mm-hmm. so i was like man look i got all these other cameras i can go to best buy and trade them all in right <laughs> <laughs> dog they they didn't even offer 10 percent of what the fucking canon cost oh, for all man. of the cameras that's four fucking cameras with two lenses a piece and wasn't even freaking 10% yeah, of man. what it cost. It was like, I think maybe 150 bucks for all four cameras oh, and all the lenses. Oh, like, well, they're coming out with new cameras all the time now. It's, it's like it's, they devaluing their own stuff. It's, it's crazy to keep yeah. up with. That's why I didn't keep up with it. I bought my camera and then 10 years later, I was like, you know what? I got, I got to stop resisting. <laughs> I got to stop. Like, I need some autofocus at some point. Because <laughs> yeah. this one doesn't have autofocus. If I move in or out of focus, it, it doesn't follow you. It doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah, this one, daggone. I guess it's because all these crazy lights in here. It'd be freaking... <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't seen <laughs> <laughs> So I got to get one good focal point and turn that shit off. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I use the couple of streams that I did use it on. I call that my serious camera because... ADHD, I guess. I'm sitting there playing the game and I see the chat pop up on there and somebody got a question in there or they asked me about something about uh, military service and shit. And I'm like, yeah, man, I, I was in, I did this, I did this. And then I'm getting my ass whipping the game and I was like, hold up, pause the game. Then I switched to that camera. I was like, 
So, so serious. <laughs> and I start talking to the serious camera. It's the host camera. <laughs> yeah, because it's like this is supposedly 4K, yada 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 bullshit. Mm. This I got it on uh, running at 23 point something frames, almost 24 pr- frames. So yeah. it gives you like this real cinematic look. So I'm That's cinematic. Serious yeah. <laughs> so yes, I did all these things. It was cool, but it sucked at yeah. the same time because I almost died. <laughs> But, you know, we talked about originality and everything. And one of the things that I said in the intro that we didn't really cover. What's up with the hair, man? <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. I like to, <laughs> I like to go wild. I like to try. It's kind of like, it's, I think it's a good rep- representation of me and my personality. It's like, I, I don't, I get bored easily. So I'm always trying new stuff. I'm always like, what if, and then I try it, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Even me, when I look back at my channel, I'm like, oh, watch this old tutorial. And I'm like, damn, that hair, though. So <laughs> what you was I kinda, thinking? <laughs> I mean, you can kind of gauge uh, the timeline of your yeah, by the hair much. style and everything. Yeah, evolution, you know. <laughs> but right now, I really like what I have right now. I might color it at some point if I get too bored, but I think this is this is here to stay. Well, right now. We'll enjoy it while you can <laughs> in there, young man. <laughs> uh, some of us aren't that fortunate. I can't die my scalp or nothing like that. So <laughs> enjoy it while you can. I, man, I, I, I tell my son that. That boy, you got some nice wavy hair and everything. You get that from his uh, mom and shit or whatnot. You know, and I was just like, hey, son. <laughs> look at me. I'm your father. We got the same genes. <laughs> You better enjoy that shit while you got it. You better take care of it while you got it. <laughs> but uh, a couple of things before we let you go. Um, you talked about, you know, the streaming platform being behind and everything. And, you know, you, you feel like you are playing catch up to, you know, other social media platforms or whatnot. What do you think could take, you know, streaming to the next level? Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> well, give me your top there's three. So, there's so many basic things to cover uh, um, when it comes to like uh, branding and marketing and, and overall uh, um, just the mentality, you know, understand that, hey, like it's cool. Video games are cool and stuff, but now it can be a hobby as well as a job. It can be a mix of both and, and stuff. And this is not something that is, you know, the, the most people in the streaming community don't understand that. If you go to like Twitter, you'll hear people say, don't start streaming for money. And I disagree with that. If, you, if you're going to start streaming for you can start streaming for money. You can start a podcast for money, for example, but just do it right. You know, that's what I say. You can't start something. Plan. Tre- yeah. Exactly. You can treat it like a hobby and then complain that you're not making money. <laughs> you know, you can't jump in it and then just, oh, I'll figure it out. And then you, you don't. Uh, well, God damn it, Joe Rogan did it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's, um, I feel like that's the main mentality that, that, that needs to be addressed in, in the gaming community, the streaming community and stuff. Yeah. I know people, I have friends of mine who are coaches, you know, stream coaches, mm-hmm. just like, just like in any other, uh, um, domain, like there are coaches, there are people who teach, there are teachers, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, the streaming community was like, oh, if you need a stream coach, maybe streaming is not for you. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing you can possibly say. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, if you need, if you need a personal tra- trainer, then maybe you're not meant to be fit. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Beyonce has a vocal coach. What? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, if, you got a personal trainer too. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and, and then they're like, oh, if, if, if you're, if you knew all that, if you have that, all that information, why don't you just do it? You know, why are you coaching people? And, and I'm like, Beyonce, do you even know Beyonce's vocal coach? You don't know. They're not a pop star. What, <laughs> what's your point? Mm-hmm. Your math teacher doesn't, hasn't won any prizes, any Nobel prizes. Like it's, it's just people who like teaching, who enjoy teaching. So that's one of the things. That's just really one of the things, but uh, there's uh, um, so many other uh, things that, that the gaming community needs to understand the whole business side of things, how much money is being poured into this industry. Even if it's a hobby for you, you need to understand that, Hey, big companies are watching and they're making moves. Uh, for example, recently, like Burger King, uh, 
they did this weird ad thing where they were giving five dollars to streamers and then they use their 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 faces on an ad but they kind of vaguely blurred it and it was popular streamers too and you're like we need to stop this this is not cool like we can't have burger king use us yeah. for five dollars and put us in advert that's like that's straight up illegal <laughs> but since we're so far behind that we don't know and we're, we're not really gonna fight it we're gonna be like well you know co- what is copyright i don't have rights i'm a streamer you know <laughs> we're like nothing's gonna happen it's just gonna um be swept under under the rug uh, and there's that so i think the business side the, the the money side and then there's just like the the overall morality you know um on on a platform like like Twitch or YouTube or, or anywhere. I feel like society in general, at least in developed countries, I feel like the same problems that um, those societies have are, are really present on those platforms. You know, if I, if you find like a top 10 of, of the best, of the people are making the most money, the most popular on YouTube, on Twitch or stuff, there isn't a lot of diversity there, for example, you know, and, and, you know, visible minorities, women, LGBT, LGBTQ plus people are being targeted on those platforms. And, and that's an issue. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. That's an issue. And no one is doing anything about it, uh, especially like a platform like Twitch, for example, um, you know, who will make advertisements saying we stand with this, we stand with that. Mm-hmm. They don't really they don't really try to stop the viewers, you know, like us streamers, we have all the rules in the world. Like you, you, you know, you throw a couple of opinions, a little spicy here and there, you, you might get banned, which is normal. You know, you have, you have a responsibility as a, as a content creator, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't be joking, joking, joking until it slides into that hate space, <laughs> hate yeah, speech, yeah. you know, it's, you should, they should get you off, you know, but, um, but the viewer though, <laughs> They can do whatever the heck they want. Make a new account, no problem. Harass people, even partner. Well, I don't like being one of those people who like, oh yeah, but the people at the top or whatever. But you know, sometimes partnered streamers will do like some horrible stuff, like targeted harass, like obvious targeted harassment where the police will get involved. And yeah. and Twitch is like, mm, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Twitch is like, everything seems good here to me. And yeah, the people, what, basically, the people, the viewer and the and the broadcaster, I feel like needs there needs to be <laughs> at least a talk. I feel like a general feeling. I don't want rules, you know. That that's not what I'm saying. I don't want to be yeah. like you can't talk about religion, for example, you know. But I I I I wish because <laughs> that's all I can do, <laughs> you know. I, I wish that there was this general feeling and understanding in this community that hey, uh maybe don't tell a seven-year-old that he's going to hell because he's Muslim. You know, don't, don't do that shit. <laughs> maybe. Whoa, maybe. Whoa, that's, yeah. that's some hot shit there. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about spicy. That, that day. <laughs> no, like for real, you know, but I, I wish that was, um, I, don't, I don't blame Twitch for that happening. Mm-hmm. I don't even blame the person for doing that because, you know, uh, um, they don't know any better. I just wish that the community as a whole that was already ingrained in the community and the mentality of us being more inclusive and, and we would know that, you know, if it was really like that, we would, kn- it would never really happen, but we're behind. <laughs> yeah. We're behind a lot of things. Very well. Well, sir, <laughs> I know it's getting kind of late. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the, uh, a good place to end. <laughs> yeah, not, not really, but <laughs> but um, before you go, let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Uh, YouTube is the main place where I'm at, and um, get level. Uh, I usually I usually brag like that. I say just Google me, you know, <laughs> Google me, you'll find me. But I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I'm on TikTok. I'm I'm everywhere. I'm ev- except Facebook. I'm I deleted my Facebook page because I was getting some weird messages there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm everywhere except for for Facebook. So just type get level. You'll you'll find me. Very well. As it is for every guest of the Random Rams with Rob, the door is open for you always to come back to plug your next big thing or just to shoot the shit. <laughs> 